space age anniversary of the October Revolution, from the space orbit to the deck of the legendary ship. Heroes from different generations. The first commissar of the Aurora, Alexander Gerlishev, is again at the historic gun that fired the salvo on October the 25th, 1917, at the taking of the Winter Palace. Just like in 1917, a thundering salvo rumbled across the city. multiplied a millionfold by the roar of spaceships rocketing skywards. And now a new breakthrough in space conquest. emptiness of space. But this film is about a great feat of Soviet science, the victory of spaceman Pavel Belayev and Alexei Leonov. Man leaves ship in space. This film was made possible through the participation and consultation of research institutes and organizations which took part in the actual launching of the spaceship Voschod 2. Scenario by Rapchikov, produced by Kosenko, camera by Athanasiev, Rafikov, Sugorov and Shumov. Sound recorded by Aipov. Moscow Popular Science Film Studio. The Soviet spaceship Vostok was the first ever to orbit the Earth with a man on board. The Aurora proclaimed a new social epoch in human history, and the Vostok opened up the space era to humanity. is a huge one, weighing over six tons with the last stage of the launching rocket. A sphere over two meters in diameter, equipped with 300 different instruments. Altogether, six Vostok satellite spaceships were launched into orbit about the Earth. When the flight is over, the Vostok returns to Earth plunging from the dense layers of the atmosphere in which even meteors burn up. Roaring sheets of fire can be seen through special heat-resistant glass. The surface temperature of the ship reaches 10,000 degrees. The astronaut can land inside the ship or he can be catapulted. This is the world's first passenger spaceship, Yuri Kagarin's. It landed on the steps near Sarato. Another landing on the Volga. German Titov has just landed. Spaceship was stopped too. All burnt and black from the fiery descent from the atmosphere, but safe and sound. Andrian Nikolaev, 
came down in the stone steps of Kazakhstan. The flight is over, but Andrian hates to leave his boss off free. Valentina Nikolaeva Tereshkova. Like the other Vostoks that have circled the Earth, hers too can be used again for new launches. The Vostok space vehicle has been called a wonder of science and engineering, and justly so. It's the space symbol of the 20th century. But science never stands still. This is a new ship, the multi-seat piloted Voss Hod, a great improvement over earlier vehicles. It's capable of carrying a whole crew. On October 12, 1964, it carried an engineer, a scientist, and a doctor on its first trip into space. Vladimir Komarov, Konstantin Vertistov, and Boris Yegorov. This new ship makes it possible to solve new problems in space research. The problem of a walk in space was no longer science fiction, but had become a routine undertaking on the program. It took Alexei Leonov and Pavel Belyayev five years to prepare for their Voskhod 2 flight. The walk into space means to step into a vacuum. But there is no such deep vacuum here on Earth. So, an artificial one was constructed for the two spacemen. A thermal pressure chamber. The cabin of the spaceship was wheeled into this chamber, which resembles an underground town. This was the first training session of its kind. Leonov and Belayev experienced the deep vacuum of outer also the extreme cold of the void in this chamber. The only thing lacking is weightlessness. But I have orders to close the hatches of the chamber. From the control panel, commands are given to the spacemen to enter the cabin of their ship, and then comes an order to the machine department. What is a vacuum? How do high altitudes threaten human life? On the Earth, the human body has an internal pressure that perfectly balances the outside atmospheric pressure. As the altitude increases, the outside pressure falls off rapidly, while the internal pressure remains the same. This causes a disruption in gas exchange, which consists in oxygen being taken by the blood and carbon dioxide being released. Breathing stops and blood circulation comes to a halt. At 20 kilometers altitude, oxygen starvation paralyzes the cells of the brain and the blood begins to boil at ordinary body temperature. Life and a vacuum are two things that cannot go together. Yet, we have to learn to live and work in a deep vacuum. Kevin pressure unity, humidity 37, close to 40, temperature 20. Ascent to altitude 37, velocity at maximum. Watch pressure in the cabin. Start minus five minutes. 
Set tape recorder. Full volume. VKU outside. Feeling fine. Ready for takeoff. Altitude 30, 36, 37. Hold the pad. Separation affected. Close viewing ports. Put on gloves. Check white glove. Watch left glove. An opening valve of cabin simulator to balance pressure. Pressure in airlock going up. Exit from the cabin atmosphere to the deep vacuum and code of space will take place through an airlock. The process of locking on rivers with dams is done this way. A ship enters a lock and together with the water delivered to the chamber rises to the next level or is lowered to the next level. The same principle is used in leaving submarines underwater. And now it's being used to get out into space. The cabin air of the spaceship is delivered to the lock and pressure is balanced. The spaceman enters the airlock, which is then depressurized. The spaceman can now simply walk out into the deep vacuum of space. Ready for opening of hatch. Helmet is tight, gloves on, feeling fine, ready for exit. An opening hatch of cabin simulator. Begin exit. Is the film camera on? And crossing the edge. I'm settled in airlock. I'm taking over control. Hatch of cabin simulator is closed. Get ready for opening the hatch of airlock. I'm opening hatch of airlock. Hatch of airlock is open. Get ready for exit. Ready for exit. I'm out as far as the waist. The void of space is a dead and rough world. In the vast expanses of space, our Earth is but a tiny bit of dust. But man has ventured forth and will conquer the universe. Everything is strange and unusual in this new world. There's no support, no top, no bottom. Everything is weightless. Orientation is lost. The vacuum is dangerous. Man in orbit about the Earth is confronted with a hostile environment, belts of radiation, a solar wind, and solar storms. Outer space is not only a hazardous vacuum, but also a mysterious state of weightlessness. Neither vacuum nor weightlessness are known on Earth, but both are created artificially in an airborne laboratory. Carrie Brown aircraft is a mock-up of a spaceship cabin. Vilayev and Leonov are in their seats. Weightlessness sets in when the plane flies in a parabolic flight path. Within a few seconds, Leonov has to leave the cabin for an airlock. The extremely complicated experiment has begun. First exit for the airlock in a state of zero gravity. The lock has been passed. Leonov is floating about in a pool of weightlessness. The aircraft again goes into a parabolic curve and again zero gravity is produced. Leona was learning
beginning to work in a state of weightlessness. He takes the camera off the bracket, which is what he will have to do in space. Now the time has come to rehearse the operation of returning to the cabin. Like a guiding star, the lifeline brings Leona back to the airlock. There are still other barriers to an exit into outer space. Space medicine and space biology have worked out a methodology of training the spaceman for flights in the cabin of a spaceship. Now for the first time, the spaceman has to leave the ship and step out into open space. The first one to do this was Alexei Leonov. How would he react mentally when he entered this new and mysterious world? Would he lose courage? Wouldn't he be a fearful of falling, afraid of losing orientation, the fear of losing touch with the last link, the ship? of scientists. A hidden camera follows his every action through the glass windows of viewing ports. Scientists are worried that his reason and willpower might be paralyzed by the sight of a fantastic ocean of void, that ancient terrestrial instincts would clash in this world where everything is so unearthlike. No weight, no support, no air, no orientation. Psychologists know of cases when a person after a long stay in a closed room comes out into the open and is mentally disabled. It's too much for the mind. Alexei Leonov undergoes a special training program to overcome this so-called psychological barrier and to develop spatial courage. Scientists summarized the observations of Leonov in the cabin simulator. Excellent results were obtained after training on the centrifuge and the space chamber, in the zero gravity pool, and on other special training devices. Now it's time to test the psychological preparedness of Leonov to face the void of space. After a long stay in the silence and isolation chamber, Alexei Leonov is put in a plane and sent skywards. How will he react to this test? He is not alone, though. An experienced instructor goes along. Time is nearing. The piloted, multi-seated spaceship Boschod 2, covered with a cone-shaped shell, is delivered to be attached to the launching rocket. Space engineering demand the ultimate in skill, knowledge, and attention.
Gagarin observed the preparations. A very responsible and complicated operation is fitting the couch and the space suit. the astronaut will be in a special suit. A space suit is a complex piece of engineering. Its outside protective shell reflects the thermal rays of the sun, which produce such a high temperature that human life is endangered. shells protect the spaceman from the fatal vacuum of space. The suit is completely pressurized. A thermal insulation shell protects the astronaut against cosmic cold and solar heat. Inside all these layers of clothing are systems of ventilation, communication, heating, illumination and oxygen supply. Then there's the pressurized helmet, equipped with microphone and telephone. Add to these special gloves and special boots. Just before emerging into space, the astronaut will put on an autonomous life support pack. Thus attired, the spaceman can live and work in open space outside the cabin of his ship. No, this is not the start yet. This is just a rehearsal. It's very important to practice every step, every motion. Even the ascent in the lift is rehearsed. And everywhere we see the spaceman's friend and comrade, Yuri Gagarin. The rehearsal of getting into the cabin is over. Evening has come, but this is an evening that will not be forgotten. The house of the astronauts, a sort of spaceman hotel. It will become a museum at some future time. Here's where the spaceman Yuri Gagarin, German Titov, Andrian Nikolaev and Pavel Popovich, Valentina Tereshkova, Valery Bukovsky and Vladimir Komarov, Konstantin Feoktistov and Boris Igorov lived before takeoff. Everything is the same on the eve of a launching. The tradition in the house of astronauts is a quiet evening of chess, music, books and friendly conversation. Mathematicians, operators, ballistic experts gather in the main hall of the computing center. They are the ones that will see that the flight goes well. Dressing the spaceman today is an especially exhausting job. For the first time, the spacesuit will not only be protection 
in addition to the cabin of the spaceship, but will be converted into an independent cabin through a flexible one that closely follows the contours of the human body. It's important to protect the astronaut's eyes because beyond the limits of the Earth's atmosphere, the sun's rays are so strong that they can easily blind a person. Everything is ready. Let's go. Familiar route to the spaceport. Vladimir Komarov, commander of the first Voskhod 1 spacecraft, passes on the baton to a new space crew consisting of Pavel Vilayev and Alexei Leonov. Years, centuries will pass, and Earth world will remember how the first man, Yuri Gagarin, took off into the cosmos to be followed by other spacemen. Here too was the start into space of the first woman astronaut, Valentina Nikolaeva Tereshkova. The first Voskhod spacecraft lifted off this bed too. This time, space history was taking a new step. A man would walk into space. He would live and work outside his spaceship. Alexei Leonov is to undertake this task for humanity at large, for the future of the human race. Spaceship Voskhod 2. Alexei Leonov takes his last few steps to the cabin. Now the commander of Voskhod 2, Pavel Belyaev, leaves the Earth and proceeds to his space liner. This is the beginning of a historic event in space conquest. The pressmen are all attention recording the events for millions of readers. The time is approaching. The countdown has reached one minute left. Put away logbook. Take up initial position. That's clear. One minute left. Prepare for liftoff. Attention. Put key on takeoff. Start. Start. salute the motherland in honor of the 50th anniversary of Soviet power. This begins a new chapter 
champion, the chronicle of space conquest. This race in the sky is a part in history. We all send you greetings and the best of wishes. Thanks a lot. The Earth watches and sees a new world for the eyes of the spaceman. Bearing is off, I see the Earth. The sky is beautiful. How do you feel? We feel fine. Very small G-loading. For us, it's nothing. At the commuting center, electronic machines issue the first information about orbital measurements. What is the orbit? What is the period of revolution? The apogee, the perigee. The orbit is close to the calculated one. The orbital period is 90.9 minutes with a perigee of 173 and apogee at 495 kilometers. Then everyone knew. March the 18th, 1965, at 10 hours, spaceship Vosco 2 settled into an Earth orbit with Pavel Belayev and Alexei Leonov on board. But there's yet another surprise in store. I am in the airlock. I have taken over control. Your control light is on. The floating Diamond 2 is an airlock. Hatch cover of airlock is closed. Proceeding according to plan. Feel fine. In the computing center, specialists follow every step in the flight of Voschod 2. It's just passed over the southern extremity of America, Cape Horn. It's approaching Africa, second circuit. And then, at 11.30 Moscow time, hatch of airlock is open. Get ready for exit. Ready for exit. Edge of lock. Feel fine. Below I see clouds. The sea. Congratulations on exit. Alexei, take cover of camera. What do you see? I see the focuses. What are the conditions for work? Normal conditions. I'm beginning to recede. The sun is over me. A man is in cosmic space, in a free-floating state. Space Television takes the families of Belyayev and Leonov out into space too. Just imagine, the Voskhod 2, 
is moving with a velocity of 28,000 kilometers per hour, and Leonov is flying along next to the ship at the same speed. The first swimmer in the ocean of the universe. How is one to describe this fantastic position and these motions of a man in open space? Flight, soaring, floating, swimming. The newspapers set up an international contest. The best was a new verb formed from the name Leonov to Leonite. The start was over the Caucasus and here it is already the Yenisei, Siberia. Alexei, come up to the lock. Ten minutes in open space. Ten minutes that shook the world. Alexei, get ready to enter. On orders from the ship's commander Belayev, Leonov pulls in on the lifeline and approaches the airlock. Taking the automatic camera, Leonov enters the airlock. The finish was over Sakhalin. In all, Leonov was outside the space cabin for 20 minutes. I congratulate you all on the fulfillment of the first part of the program. The beginning of the second portion of this space epoch. The flight proceeds, orbit after orbit, hour by hour. New observations and Leonov's first drawings in space and recordings in the logbook about impressions. in progress 24 hours. The program is fulfilled and it's time to return to Earth. The landing of a space vehicle is an extremely complicated and responsible stage of the flight. All landing operations of previous spaceships have proceeded without a hitch. And now... <laughs> Thirty reporting. No response to third command. A malfunction of solar orientation. No response to the third command. Thirty seconds later came the following order from the center. Permission given for manual descent using retro power plant. Don't hurry to switch in retro power plant. Be attentive and careful. A manual landing on the 17th circuit. Excitement was high as we all waited. For the first time, Pavel Bilayev had to land a spaceship manually, as if it were a plane. On the 17th circuit, Pavel Bilayev took all control into his own hands. They know that since the speed is tremendous, the slightest error 
will change the point of impact by scores of kilometers. A piloting mistake can send the ship off to an unknown destination. Belayev displayed great courage and skill in handling the ship. Home at last, back on Earth. The search party found the astronauts north of Perth. The first eager questions. What did you see up there? How was it? What did it feel like soaring in space? And there certainly was a lot for Alexei Leonov to tell about the first 20 minutes spent in space and for Pavel Vilayev to tell about the first manual landing of a spaceship. The first autographs, but many more will come later. the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's all right, I don't mind a bit. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar Are you getting a TV picture now, Houston? Neil, yes, we are getting a TV picture. You're in our field with you now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap. 